Shalom. First and foremost, giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakudash. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles that do rule well, overseeing the tabernacle of David, which of the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And greetings and salutations unto Yaakim, upholding the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. All right. Now, this is a Hebrew edification presented to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rechakodash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, his name meaning he is. Yahweh Shai is the name of the only begotten Son. All right. His name meaning. He delivers. Okay. Bahashem, meaning in the name. Racha Kodash, meaning Holy Spirit, or directly translated, Spirit Holy. You know, in Hebrew, the, um, <clears throat> how do you say, uh, uh, the uh, noun will, will come, uh, B before the uh, the adjective, all right? And so you wouldn't say, like in English, I'm just making that point for the term Holy Spirit. And if you consider that, that I help you with being able to, you know, when you're reading and you're speaking Hebrew, because it's, it's a principle. And so you, we say in the Hebrew, Rechak Wadash, but in the English, we'll say uh, Holy Spirit. So in the, in the Hebrew, Rochakodaj, like I said, is spirit, all right, which is the noun, all right, and then holy, which is the Kodash, which comes later, which is the adjective. That's how you, that's how, that's how you say and, and read and speak Hebrew. But in English, the the adjective will come first. That's why you would say holy, and then you say spirit. All right, so it's like in the Hebrew, like in English, you'll say good morning, but in, in Hebrew, you will say bakar tawab, if you, you know to properly say it. So that's just a, something to put out there because this is a Hebrew edification. And so, that's something that I felt that it would be good to just say. But this is about um, possessive suffixes. All right. That's what this lesson will be on. All right. And I wrote it into a chart to make it easier because when I, I studied languages when I was in school and we, we used to always use, even like with different languages, we'll use this chart to break down, um, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, to break down the tenses, if that makes sense. So like, for instance, in Spanish, uh, this chart, would you would have had like, estoy, est, um, est, it was it estas, esta, you know, then when you go to the right, you, it would have said, it would have said estamos, and, um, it depends if you were speaking. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but you get the point. All right. So this but this chart is for Hebrew, you know, you know, so firstly, let's uh, let's go through the uh, first person singular, which is my. All right. And the suffix is. Suffix will be connected to the just for let me speak on the term of, of suffix. I actually have it written down, so I'm, I'm gonna read that. All right, so <clears throat> suffix suffixes are added to the end of a word and can indicate various grammatical elements such as gender, number possession and the verb tense all right so 
So a suffix can be connected to a noun, it could be connected to a verb. All right. Now this is possessive suffixes. All right. And so for the first person singular, which is my, the suffix would be ya. All right. And I'm going to give more just to so this won't be too long. And so I can be more um, illustrative when I talk about examples. I'm going to do another lesson, a part two or, or whatnot, of different examples of the usage of these suffixes applied to actual words, actual nouns, actual verbs. All right. And I'm going to write it down so you can see it and follow along. So this is just going to this is just, you know, I'm going to take it step by step. This is just going to be about uh you know the uh the different possessive suffix plainly and then we'll go into more detail in, in in future lessons so if you wanted to you know follow along or you know it'll, it'll be posted shortly afterwards all right so let's see here and if this if this video gets reshared the the videos, the page that you can go to watch the the future videos would be um, GMS Son of Isaac 2, and most likely I'll post it on GMS Son of Isaac 3 as well. Okay, so let's see here. <clears throat> the first person singular, as I said, which is my which it would be ya in the Hebrew, okay? The second person singular, which is your, would be ka in the Hebrew. <clears throat> the third person singular, which is his, all right? Well, in the masculine context, it would be his, in the feminine, it would be her. Now, in the in the masculine, his would be wa. All right, you know, sapar wa his book. All right, and I, like I said, I'm not going to do too many examples because it's going to make it take longer than I would like, and I would like to write them down um, before you. So now, in the feminine, the her which is ha, okay? But when you pronounce it at the end of the sub, when you put, you see it as I wrote, pronounce ah, meaning when you write that let, it's not a letter in this context. When you like, when you write this suffix and you connect it to a verb or a noun, you're not going to pronounce it ha. Like you're not going to say sapar ha, herb, you're, you're going to say uh how do you say sapara you're gonna it's gonna be pronounced backwards if that makes sense i hope that makes sense and i'm gonna do a I'm gonna, like i said i'm gonna do another lesson so we, i can be more illustrative with it all right now next we have first person plural which is on the right side first person plural which is our or us and that is nawa. All right, nawa. Next, we have second person plural. All right, now the second person plural, which is you all, in the masculine meaning, if you're if it's a if it's a masculine conjugated word, or if it's speaking of a a man, or some words are just masculine, some words are feminine. All right, but Anyway, the masculine is come. All right? Come. The feminine is con. Con. All right? The difference between the masculine and the feminine would be the ma at the latter part for masculine and the na at the latter part for the feminine. All right? Now... Next, and lastly, we have the third person plural, 
which is there. Now you have masculine and feminine in this as well. Now the masculine would be ma, but it's pronounced um. You're not gonna say you're not gonna connect it to the end of a word and then and say ma. You're gonna say you're gonna say that word with like that noun and that verb, and you're gonna end it with um. All right. Now the feminine is the same in that regard of those principles, but instead of a ma, it's a na. So it's pronounced an at the end of the word. Okay. Uh, you, you, <clears throat> like for instance uh, I'm going to give one example real quick uh, you would say if you said their food the noun would be food I mean yeah or the yeah, noun be food and there would be the suffix possessive suffix alright now if it would be masculine you would say I'm going to say it in the Hebrew. Lachamam. <clears throat> uh, you would say lachamam. Okay? And now, if it was feminine, you would say lacham lachaman. 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 So if it was, if it was, to phys if you were to say that from a feminine perspective, it would be lachaman, you, you or a masculine lacham mum. You're not going to say lacham ma, or you're not going to say lacham na. Okay. And I'm gonna do another lesson so it can be more visual, and so I, I'm gonna write these things out. You know, so we can, you know, because you got to take everything step by step. So hopefully this is some good notes for Akim. You can go, you can make this chart. You can practice by keep writing this chart over, over and over and over. You know, repetition. You keep writing this chart yourself until you can just write this without looking at anything to help you. You should be able to just write all of this by yourself. All right. With the chart. And know exactly, you know, under, understand the chart, you know, and also you can practice by using nouns and verbs, using these and applying them to nouns and verbs. And when you read, like, go in the blue letter, you can start seeing certain contexts of these being used, and they'll, you know, it's good to help help you if you like if you read in the blue letter, like read Hebrew or just read Hebrew, period. But you know, typically you have the blue letter as a good source because the blue letter is, is, you know, good grammatical Hebrew, which is the Bible. The Bible is very, is you know, is, is professional Hebrew. Is, is, but, um, uh, you know, I guess that'll be it for this lesson. All right, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Give all praises, honor, glory, and worship unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to you, Akim. Shalom and keep the faith.